Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Gigi and the 561. I'm Pam Barker. I'm Gigi. Thanks for being here. You know what? I think sometimes people do not give other people the benefit of the doubt of having a functioning brain. Take, for example, the recent announcement from Goldfish, the makers of Goldfish. I mean, it's just this little tiny fish cracker. And personally, you know, my favorite cracker is just a club cracker. We get them at Aldi. They're not expensive. They're their brand or whatever brand it is. And they're slightly salty. They're delicious. I love those. Those are my favorite crackers. But um, when our granddaughter was small, goldfish were good. There was a time when I ate a lot of goldfish. But here's where the thing comes in about the dumbing down, in a way, in this in this world. Why do you think the makers of goldfish, that tiny little cracker, they're changing the name to Chilean sea bass crackers? And you can find out more, ChileanSeaBassCrackers.com. That's a mouthful. But here's why. They're trying to appeal to millennials, Gen Zers, Gen whatevers. Get, you know, give me a break, people. Stop with the labels. But um, they want them to buy the crackers again and not just think they're for children. I'm sorry. You need to change the name of goldfish to Chilean sea bass because you're afraid people are not smart enough to know they're not just for kids. That's the fear. They're not just for kids. You need to buy them. You need to eat them. I think we get it. I think as we grow up, we understand our changing taste and our changing, you know, hey, you know, animal crackers, little crackers shaped like animals in a box that you could carry like a purse. Sometimes you want those. I don't know. You had them as a kid. They were great. They're bland. They're, you know. But it's just this constant, I think it's insulting to the intelligence of people. I don't care your generation, gener- generation, whatever. Let people figure it out. It's a cracker. It's a handy little snack cracker. You can take on a plane. You can You can have them in the car. Changing the name. You know, will it last? It sounded from the story. It wasn't clear. It could be temporary. For now, they're going to change it. So, the good news about that, to me, besides just getting past the, you know, the whatever of mm, assuming people don't know they can buy these crackers, no matter their age, it's like ice cream. You liked it as a kid, you like it as an adult. Do you have to change the name of ice cream to something else to appeal to the adult sector? I don't know. But here's the good news. Back to the good news. They have released some new flavors. Now, I'm very interested in these new flavors. Well, some of them. Goldfish Old Bay. They're seasoned like Old Bay. You know the seasoning, Old Bay? Spicy Dill Pickle. Yeah. And Frank's Red Hot Crackers. Now, all of those were created specifically with adults in mind. All right, got it. Especially the, you know, the Frank's hot crackers, red hot. Obviously, you know that's not for a child. I mean, I I just think, again, you're going to create something with adults or children in mind. Well, you do that all across the board, no matter what the food is. But um, for the holiday season... We're we're still talking here. They're going to have goldfish. Now I don't get this part. Elf, E L F E L F, goldfish elf maple syrup flavored grams. You know, like little Teddy grams. They're going to be coming out soon. A goldfish elf. I don't know. It it sort of reminds me of a show that I I had for our our infant granddaughter when she was when she was an infant she's not anymore she's almost a teenager she just turned 12 um and she's smart enough by the way to know that goldfish could be for any age let me just tell you that much and a whole lot more 
But it meant that, that reminds me, the goldfish elf thing reminds me of a show called Bubble Guppies. It was the weirdest thing. She liked it as a kid. It was colorful. and But these animals were like sw- swimming underwater, like cows with no, with no, with no lace. They weren't walking there under, underwater. It was all qu- quite bizarre. But anyway, um, if you are into, into goldfish, there you go. Um, Gary, my partner, G-E-R-R-Y, I want to give him a shout out because he is now a travel writer for another magazine. It's print and online. It's actually a print magazine. Those are, those are getting more scarce. It's called Aqua, A-Q-U-A, and the first issue is out, and his story is in it, and it's beautifully done, and he, he wrote and, the, and did the photos both. So you can look it up. Um, it's primarily focused in Florida, but I'm, so I'm not sure about where all it will be available soon. But uh, they do have an online, Aqua, A-Q-U-A, Aqua Magazine. Now, in the fall, in the, in the summer, you kind of want to travel. You want to do family things and all of this. But then there's something about the fall. There's something about November that really beckons to me. And I ran across the most interesting story. It was about this guy who built a tree house in his yard. And it was so successful as he turned it into an Airbnb that he quit his job and could make enough money from that to to live with his tree house. That was so wonderful. So I started looking. What is in our area? In that way, are there other tree houses? Is he is he unique? Well, he isn't. Uh, there is one I found uh, a private treehouse studio in Deerfield Beach, Florida. That's not too far from us. We were there. We've been there a couple of times. This particular one is limited to two guests, no pets. It has one bedroom, one bed, and it doesn't say the size on that, and one private bath. Now, I, I, I drilled down, I looked into it to see about available dates in November, and the thing about this, you have to book two nights, there is a cleaning fee, and there is a service fee. Now, these kind of charges get under my skin. They do. Just go ahead and build it in. Just go ahead and build it into the price. Because the Airbnb service fee, what? What is that? I don't know, but... What you get for this, they have a, uh, I think they have a a pool and and whatnot. And you can park. That's nice. So here are the fees. Uh, It's $78 times two, which comes to $158. That's not, that's good. It's really, that's, that's excellent, really. The whole thing's very reasonable. The cleaning fee is only 20 and the service fee is 25. Hmm. Now, what it doesn't specify is, what do you do for that twenty dollars? What what's included in that? You know, the total for for a stay would be two hundred and one dollars. So, sounds reasonable. It sounds very reasonable. Um, I think it sounds fun to stay in a treehouse. Never done that. You know, when I was a kid, I weirdly I I, I outgrew it, but I had a fear of heights as a child. I, I definitely outgrew it, but uh, I, I never liked tree houses that other kids loved. I would get halfway up the ladder and freeze, literally freeze. I just, you know, <laughs> could not do it. Interesting little factoids. I ran across a story the other day. You may not know this this guy, he, a, a very famous song, The Day the day the Music Died, was written about Don McLean's song. Buddy Holly was a, was a rocker in the early, early days. He died in a horrific plane crash. It was a small plane in Iowa with two other musicians and the pilot. It was a horrible plane crash. And what they think is, number one, the pilot was not experienced enough. He had actually failed some of his tests, and yet he took off in bad weather, low visibility, and the plane, he crashed it right into a cornfield. And it was it was very bad, horrific plane. Now, there were no good ones, but I mean, this one, what made it tremendously 
just unimaginable was what they think is he was misreading the instrumentation because he wasn't qualified. And he thought low visibility, really couldn't see. He was lying, relying on the instrumentation and he thought they were ascending and they were descending and, and smashed into, into the ground with unbelievable force. And the photos certainly prove that. But what was weird about this, this story was interesting. This happened in 1959 when the, when the crash happened. But it wasn't until later, uh, Buddy Holly wore very significant eyeglasses. He was kind of a nerd. If you see his look in the photos, he, his, his optometrist kind of helped him figure out a way to not be so, so geeky looking when he was doing his music. And he brought his optometrist, ophthalmologist, whichever, went to Europe, found, while he was there, he found these very heavy frames. And he thought those would be good. They would be iconic. And they definitely are. And so he brought a couple pair back for Betty Holly specifically. Well, the glasses, they found certain things, uh, like his wallet and certain things like that. But they, they didn't find these iconic glasses until way later when the when the snow thawed and then they found his iconic glasses i never did know that story and i'm not sure why it was a recent story because it didn't seem as i drilled down there was anything new to add to that they're they're actually at the betty holly museum uh they're there his widow uh, sold them the museum has them and uh but how sad and tragic. And I I wanted to add this to the podcast because I thought it was such an odd, odd story and how tremendously sad the the whole thing was. Last week, uh, the fourth Thursday of every October, every year, every single year is World Champagne Day. Now I posted some photos of Gary, G-E-R-R-Y, but pronounced Gary, and I in Reims, France. Last year, last August, um, that's where Verve Clicquot uh, is. That's their home. That's the the uh, winery is there. The champagne is is made there, and we were there. We visited, and we had so much fun. And so I posted that, and somebody came in and said, "Have fun." And it's like, well, I would if we were there again, but we're not. World Champagne Day. It's just fun. Uh, I think people have a love-hate. They either hate it or they love it or they just don't care. Uh, very close to Champagne is Cava. And we had some, we went to an event last week and they had uh, Cava. That was, that was pretty good. And uh, so, Royal Champagne Day. My cha- my favorite champagne is for Clico or Moet and Chandon, those two. Beverages of any kind. You're very, very, it's very specific, your taste buds. I, for one, for a while, I drank Coke Zero. And then I could not stand Coke Zero anymore. I hate, with all my heart, Diet Coke. Gary, my mate, drinks uh, Coke Zero. I drink regular Coke. I don't drink much of it, but I do drink it. And I like the Cokes that are made in Mexico because they have cane sugar in them. But water is not always equal because if you drink tap water you either like sparkling or still as a as a rule um sparkling is okay for me it's okay gary can't drink it he doesn't like it at all it's okay for me but uh there is a brand of water that i really like and it's a little bit hard to find and when i say that you can find it at target you can find it online so maybe not that hard but it's it's not as easy as random run-of-the-mill brands. It's called Saratoga, Saratoga, New York water. And not only does it have a real fresh, the distilled the water have a, a very fresh taste with no chemical taste, no none of that. It has the most amazing bottle. And it's all about presentation, isn't it? I mean, really? It's all about the look. I was, I, I, I because it's a, it's a, 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 a blue like cobalt cobalt dark blue it's the most beautiful bottle i hate to throw them away when i'm drinking the water i do 
I mean, I recycle, but oh, I hate to do it because they're so pretty. I feel like I need to collect them and put flowers in them, you know? <laughs> um, speaking of the look that people have, I saw a, a really good, very, very good video of uh, Mark Cuban, Dallas Mavericks. If you, I think he has sold them, but he was the owner. Not really keeping up so much with the Mavericks, but he is a really smart man and I respect him very much. We met him. We actually, Gary and I met him, and he's one of the nicest guys ever, very down to earth to be a billionaire, whatever he is. Very rich man, and but very, very nice and very personable. But most importantly to me, he looks great. He dresses for, when he's at an event or at, when you meet him, we met him socially, he looked good. It's all about the look. Hence, I love the water in the cobalt blue. <laughs> No, it's about the water for real, but, you know. Um, we are almost to the end of daylight savings time. It ends the weekend of November 2nd, next weekend. That weekend is really busy if you're, you know, if you're into checking the calendar and things. You have to deal with uh, falling back an hour. In other words, we gain an hour, so it gets dark very, very early. It's already getting dark early, earlier, quite a bit. But it will be dark very, very early. And you have to adjust to that. You really do. And I just wish they would pick, pick one or the other and leave it, but they won't. And I say that every time. But if you celebrate, it's also the Day of the Dead. And many people do. They have all sorts of celebrations and parties and lots of great decorations and, you know, and feast and honoring, uh, honoring those. Uh, so it's a very busy, very busy weekend for some, or at least a transitional weekend where you go from very, very bright morning evenings and you have to switch everything all out of your mind and and recalibrate recalibrate your whole vibe your whole juju so um saw an interesting post on on facebook it's something that i learned as a kid it's something that i had the opportunity to teach young managers believe it or not they needed this kind of training when i was at a major corporation a media company it's a table setting and the whole point of this it's the placement of plates your stemware your flatware everything your napkin even where does it go where does it go and it's important. This kind of stuff needs to stay alive because it is important. But the whole purpose of that was there is no place on your table for your phone. Put it away. And I think we're all guilty, very, very guilty of putting the phone on the table when we're at dinner. And we need to, we need to not do that. We need to... It Would it really hurt us not to catch a message or something in, you know, a during the time of a of a meal with people? I don't know. Um, one thing I also uh, have on hand, these brand new cheese storage bags. They look like, uh, kind of like the sacks you would take a lunch in as a kid to school if you took your lunch. Buying your lunch is always so much better, right? Especially if the food's good at your school. Uh, anyway, but you can look for that on our website northpalmbeachlife.com I wrote about these cheese storage bags now I want to leave you with this but then don't go because I want to I want to tell you where else to go on some places but this is my little you know no matter how you feel get up dress up show up and never give up and I like that very much especially now things are Things are at a interesting place in our country right now. Now, what I want you to do is go to YouTube, look for NorthPalmBeachLife.com, check out all our stuff that we have there as well. My partner, Gary, G-E-R-R-Y, writes for NorthPalmBeachLife.com. He does all of it. He's the publisher, the editor, producer of these podcasts. He wears all the hats, and he also writes for 
All Things Cruise, Splash Magazine Worldwide, and now Aqua Magazine as well. Don't forget my books. They're on Amazon. I have four novels and a children's book. Go find them. Pamela Barker, that's me. All these podcasts, every single one of them, rest on 20 platforms. iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, and Amazon, and obscure sites that you may never have heard of, but they're always at NorthPalmBeachLife.com. Thank you so much for being with me. Enjoy it when daylight savings time ends, if that's your thing. I'm Pam Barker, GG in the 561. Stay with me.